So it's about being consistent with it the same way you're consistent in farming. But instead of farming a bunch of people you don't know, why don't you start farming the ones you do? And yep. you don't need to have a whole lot of them. You just need to have 100, 200 people. Like everyone tries to reach like 10,000 people. And the truth of it is you guys can only take on another three clients. Mm. So like, what the mm. hell are you doing? You're, 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 it's a losing battle from the beginning instead of yep. just owning the minds of the 300 people that you would invite to your wedding or funeral. Now, gotcha. if we do the math on those 300 people that you'd invite to your wedding or funeral, I would much rather spend $100 on gifts on those 300 people than go out and spend $5,000 a month on Zillow leads that I might convert. What's up, y'all? Trevor here with Carrot, and uh, I've got a special guest with me, and he's a returner. He's a returning Carrot Cast uh, guest, and we're bringing on Mike Cuevas again, Mr. Real Estate Marketing Dude. And uh, we're going to be talking about how you can leverage video and some other really cool things as agents, but you can leverage these as an investor as well, especially during the COVID stuff. But the cool thing is, if you start using this stuff now to stand out, to present houses in a better light through the internet, through video especially, then you're going to be able to gain really, really good momentum outside of this. So if you're listening to this outside of COVID, guys, this is just as relevant uh, and dive in. So I want to reintroduce for those who ha did not have a chance to listen to the first episode that Mike was on, but uh, welcome back to the Carrot Cast, man. Thanks for having me, man. It's always a pleasure. We like to nerd out and talk about um, <laughs> content creation. So I'll be an open book today. I promise to share um, everything. Cool. <laughs> Dude, I, and one of the things that, that I love about working with you too, and we're trying to like, this is a test. So if, if anyone's watching this on Facebook Live, this is a test. It's the first time that I've ever launched anything on Facebook Live uh, from Zoom. So we're going to see if it works. If not, uh, listen to it on the podcast or on YouTube. But um, uh, one thing that I really enjoyed talking with you last time about, Mike, was obviously you're a video guy. You do lots of video. Um, you do video in a, in a in a really good and unconventional way. like it stands out, right? It stands out. You uh, leverage people's personalities. You make sure that you, you guys are consistently creating content. And the reason I want to get you back on is because you guys are creating new types of video content now uh, that just not a lot of people are doing. And anytime you're doing video or any type of content that's different from the norm, it stands out. So before we dive into that though, um, and this is going to be applicable to agents especially, but investors can take some of this and deploy it. I do want you to let people know kind of who, who the heck you are. If they want your full backstory, we'll go, we'll link up episode one in the show okay. notes, but uh, who you are, what do you do um, like for business and yeah. uh, who do you primarily work with? So I was, since 2002, I was a real estate agent. I was an investor for about four years as well. So I've sort of seen both sides. I went back to real estate. I owned a brokerage. So I've sort of been in and out of the real estate. Um, all aspects of it since 2002, and I've always been really good at standing out, being different. I'm a dude, so I like to do things a little bit different and um, generate attention, not leads, and mm -hmm. attract business. So I'm, uh, I started content marketing in my real estate business back in 2012-ish. That's really when I got into content marketing and uh, naturally it just evolved into like video content marketing and blogging. So what we do today is uh, we script, edit, and distribute content for video content for investors, lenders, or real estate agents anywhere in the country using just your cell phone. So mm -hmm. basically without breaking the bank, cut out the videographers. Uh, this whole thing's about storytelling and mm -hmm. not creating content that screams what you do for a living, but reminds people what you do for a living and mm -hmm. demonstrates how you do it for a living. And then more importantly is like sort of stay on top of mind so that when they think of the term real estate, especially if you're an agent, they think of, your name or your name brand. 72% mm -hmm. of people will close with the first agent they meet with. So I believe that your personal brand is the only, as a real estate agent, I believe your personal brand is the only unique selling proposition you'll ever have. It's mm -hmm. the only thing that nobody else does. Yep. As an investor, it's a little bit different. Um, you have to become less big, bad, evil, money making bad person. Like you gotta, you gotta, so it's more of positioning the brand to connect and humanize it mm -hmm. um, in a lot of ways, right? Um, that's a lot more effective because they're going directly after a niche. Yep. So regardless of which route you're going to, however you cut shape and deliver it up, it's about storytelling. Mm -hmm. and how does your story relate to whoever your audience is and whoever you're trying to serve? So um, when people go like marketing versus advertising, there's a difference. What we do is the marketing yep. part. Don't forget I exist. Don't forget I exist. And when people land there, they're like, I either like or I don't like this person based on yep. their offering. Dude, one, one, one thing you mentioned a little bit ago was you said, 
and these aren't your exact words, but this, this is the essence of it that I picked up is you said, you want to create video content that doesn't scream what you do for a living, but it reminds them what you do. Mm-hmm. And dude, that that's so important. I want people to lock into that mindset shift because, um, and, and I'll give you guys an example with the way that we do it with carrot. And then also we had another guy, I, I don't know if you, if you know, this guy or have heard of me, if you if you heard of Peter Lormer. Yeah. Um, he's on my show. Uh, so awesome. there we go. So yeah. I, I had Peter on the podcast <laughs> and he's, he's really a character. Good. Oh dude, he is a character, isn't it? A rock so guys, star. Yeah, he is, man. So we'll, we'll link that one up in the show notes. That'd be a, a great one to couple with this one. We have some other ones that are really good about creating content. But one thing that he had mentioned is that exact thing. He, he has, he has a YouTube channel that's, and I think an Instagram channel too, that's or profile just for like his personal side of things. Mm-hmm. Hey, here's me on vacations and here's this and here's who I am. Um, but then he mixes in some real estate and he does it in a really interesting way. And, and he, the reason he said that, and this really stood out to me and I want to toss it back to you because you guys are the ones executing this in a really, really good way for the majority of agents. As he said, he said, um, essentially for your warm market, the people who already know who you are, uh, you don't need to, and they already know you're an agent and stuff. You don't need to continually give them, you know, 8,000 pieces of content on how to do this or how to do that for agents. They want to see the interesting stuff about you, what you're mm-hmm. doing, you know, might be about your community, things like that. And then, oh, by the way, here's some like, here's this cool couple I had a chance to work with that helped them do X, Y, Z, or here's this tip during COVID to pay attention to this, but let's go back to this other more interesting stuff now. And that really stood out to me. And that's what I, what I want people to really look at because what, oftentimes they'll come to me and they're like, well, I'm out of ideas or, uh, you know, I, I don't want to just do this boring real estate stuff. Okay. Well, right. don't do that stuff. Like figure out your own. We'll kind of dive in on this probably on how, how you've been able to help some people do that. Um, do, do you have any sort of a, a ratio or a framework that people should follow yep. that's like, Hey, X amount personal and non real estate versus this amount real estate, or is it kind of more? Yeah, I have an random. exact ratio for it. Um, and what we're talking about is prospecting versus marketing, advertising mm-hmm. versus marketing are two totally different things. And people get them confused a lot of times. So like Zillow is not marketing for your real estate agents out there. And honestly, an investor and a realtor, I would market them totally different ways because mm-hmm. of, of, of who they are. So I'm going to talk on the agent end first. So on the agent end, you're right. Um, 72% of closings happen with people that um, they pers- like they, they meet first. So like it's a lot of it's top of mind brand awareness. At the same time, over 60% of business comes from referrals and repeat clients. It comes to be mm-hmm. around 65% when you average it out. And another 13, 15% comes from signage and open houses. So when you really add it up, the nerdy thing, just cut to the point, is that 80% of business is going to come from people you already know, you personally met or worked with you in the past. Yep. So if that's the closing, now it's like, well, these people already know who you are. So I don't need to go send these, this warm audience to a damn squeeze page. That's mm-hmm. way too cold. And I see people doing that. Like you don't need to advertise to your database. You need yep. to market to them and remind them. Um, to put this into context, Bed Bath & Beyond does this. This is all we do. Bed mm-hmm. Bath & Beyond farms their database through multiple channels. They use direct mail for the 20% off coupon. And anyone who's listening to this has a few in their kitchen drawer. Yep. And you don't ever bring them to the damn store. The only reason why they send you the damn direct mail is because it's physical and it's engagement. But whether you pick it up, throw it in the trash, it doesn't matter. You still physically engage with me and I own that attention in your mind. Mm-hmm. Right? So it's a yep. giant, don't forget I exist. Yep. The agent that is farming their database with a postcard a month or two a month for that matter is more referable than the one who's not. Mm. But direct mail is just one channel, right? Yep. Um, then you have email. Bad Bath & Beyond sends us the same damn coupon and email. And that's what we scan when we get to the damn register, mm-hmm. right? So same thing. You have to have a communication channel of emails. why you and I build email lists. People yep. still receive them. It's just another way to say, don't forget I exist, dude. Yep. And then you have social media, which is always just a reminder. And agents, investors, anyone in the real estate industry, there, we have so much content around us, but you don't have to like turn Facebook into Craigslist. Mm-hmm. You turn Facebook into a story where you tell. That's what it is. I mean, sorry. Mm-hmm. sorry. That's what it is. It's a storytelling place. Like we track people's stories. So you have to learn how to tell stories and HGTV has a whole channel. So if you think about it, all three of those channels simultaneously are giant. Don't forget I exist. That's marketing. Advertising is going to be Zillow, door knocking, prospecting. Okay. So you have to separate them. Zillow Mm -hmm. is not marketing. Zillow is advertising. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. So you're fighting for attention versus uh, actions taking. So it's a little bit different for an agent. Yep. And investors always advertising mm-hmm. because they're working a niche. I believe all agents should also be advertising, but not in general to a niche only. Yep. 
If I was an agent, I would only do what investors do, which Mm -hmm. is chase distressed assets because they're really good at generating listing leads, but agents aren't. doesn't make Mm -hmm. any sense to me. The only difference is they know how to niche down. Yep. Dude, that, that, that part of it's, it's so important. So we've been talking about the hybrid agent investor model for about the last year, year and a half. And i um, been hitting it really hard going into this year because I've been saying it a million times for two years. Uh, the two industries are coming together, right? You got uh-huh. retail, wholesale, they're coming together. And so we've been working our butts off to, to help that happen more and more with our user base. We're getting tons of people. I mean, I got a text message from uh, one of our clients, Robert Grand, this morning. He was saying, uh, you know, two years ago, I was, I was just an agent uh, looking to be an investor, joined Carrot, did what Carrot said to do. And then he's closing on a 16 unit building right now. He wholesaled a deal that he normally would have thrown that lead away as an agent because he wouldn't have been able to help him because the person needed repairs. They weren't ready to list on the market, all this stuff. He wholesaled one for 15K profit. And he's like, number one, it's easier money uh, at, at the end. Like he, it's, it's harder for most to, to take that leap of faith to take the extra quote unquote risk that there is as an investor. Mm-hmm. Once you get over that, the actual model of making money is easier. Um, but then he's like, now I can serve my clients better because now he's not looking at everything as an totally. MLS box or everything as a wholesale. So let's uh, talk y'all. to both of them right now. Let's so, do here's it. Got, here's yep. a, so both of you guys, and I've seen a lot of people do this. Um, I give you a couple options, but you're right. Like, what is it like mm-hmm. 8% of deals for investors that they look at might work? Does that mm-hmm. sound about right? Mm-hmm. Um, so what the hell do you yep. do with the other 92%? Right. And yep. like, as an investor, why don't you monetize that? Like yep. whether, I mean, if I'm an investor, at the very least I'm getting licensed and I'm finding an agent that can actually close deals because the conversion happens upon honesty. Mm. The conversion happens when you go to someone's house, say, I'm going to buy your house. Cause we know that's what makes the phone ring most times yep. because people just want to see what the number is. Right. Mm-hmm. But it's when you get there and you know, the number's not going to work. You almost have to plan it. But when you say, Hey, if you want to get top dollar then I can just list it, then yep. you need to list it. You don't need to buy, sell to me. Don't sell to me. As a matter of fact, list it, but here's yep. what I can do. Mm-hmm. I'll help you identify as a contract to help you identify areas. You get to retic- get the highest return on investment. Mm-hmm. I could line up funds for them to secure and help them flip their own damn house. We're building a lot yep. of brands doing that, but it's about having options, right? Yep. Yep. Even exactly. realtors, realtors, you guys cannot have a 5% listing plan anymore. You need a five, a six and a seven. Then you need a flat fee. Mm-hmm. Like it's just what consumers want. You don't dictate how you run your business that they do. Mm, and you yeah. just create like the solutions around it. Right. Um, and would you, every industry has gone to choice. Oh yeah. And uh, options. Dude. And, and especially with the internet side of things. Right. So when, when people are researching, number one with the agency, everyone knows three, four, five, six, seven, eight agents. Some people might know a house buyer. Most people are still, they don't really know them yet. The I buyers are helping to make that more, um, in more mainstream, but when, when everyone knows multiple options, what happens is they start to research and that's where then content comes up. That's where what we're, what we're talking about here comes up is, is if you're looking at the multiple options and like Mike said, pretty much every agent fundamentally offers the same service. Right. You know, I will list a house where I will help you buy a house and here's some sort of commission structure that's likely similar involved. Uh, then it comes down to personality or, and or authority or expertise or a mix of both. And the only way that they can discover personality or authority is through content, whether that content's one-on-one in person right. with you at a coffee shop. But here's the deal now. We're in the middle of COVID. I can't go to the coffee shop now uh, and sit across the, the table from that person. So that's where the internet content's so, so important. Yeah. So what, what are you guys doing right now um, that's working great, obviously, during the COVID stuff, but it's going to continue to work even better? I think a lot of things that are happening in COVID right now uh, with remote working, Dude, I, I've been working out of the house a lot and I've got an amazing office here. You know, we have, you know, 34 employees, uh, about a third of us are here. I'm probably gonna work at home a lot more because I'm like, ah, I built an office there now. I enjoy it. You know, it's cool. I think yeah. you're going to see a lot more people. You're starting keep- to regret that building you just got. No, man, <laughs> the, 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 build, the building I just got is, <laughs> it's, like, well, oh. it's, it's, it, it's, it's an investment property. But, uh, but with that, where, where I'm going with this is, I think there's a whole hunk of people who have certain patterns where they're like, oh, I didn't really dis- realize I should be looking for that kind of thing on the internet until the COVID stuff happened. And now they're going to continue some of those patterns moving forward. Yeah. So guys, what, what Mike was saying there is really, really important. And some of it chopped up a bit. Uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get back on here. But <clears throat> the, the, the essence of it, one thing that Mike is saying is a lot of people are posting content on social for it to just be there for 48 hours. No one ever see it again. So one of the, one of the big things you can do with your content, if it's longer than let's say 
three minutes or longer video, take that stuff and bring it over to Carrot and put it into video post. So get it on your YouTube, get it under your, under your Facebook, and then get it on the video post where our system will take the words out of your YouTube video, yank them out into a full written article, put your video at the top. <clears throat> so now you've got it in three spots. So you're multi-purposing it. You've got it on, on Facebook, you've got it on YouTube, and now you've got it on the, on, on the Google side of it, which is going to be a really, really big deal. Right. Um, is there anything else you guys are doing on, on that side of things? Are you guys literally taking the same video and plunk, 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 put it in the different spots? Yeah, we're building out all the playlists. So you want a multi-purpose. If I were to give you a checklist, the first step we do is we put it on your YouTube channel. We optimize it and you start building out that playlist. Same thing mm -hmm. with IGTV, same thing on your website. And then you distribute the content to your entire network or your database or, and or whatnot. But it's like mm -hmm. farming. I mean, you're building a brand through consistent communication with the same audience. Yep. So as long as you're doing that, um, this isn't rocket science. Let me just dumb it down and Homer Simpson it a little bit. Mm -hmm. So like, Trevor, if you stop talking to your wife next month and you, you go two months without talking to her, what's going to happen? It wouldn't be good, man. <laughs> be good. <laughs> well, for, for the realtors out there, what do you think happens when you, when you don't talk about, uh, talk to your clients or your past clients, mm -hmm. the relationship fades. Like what happens yeah. is that when we're working with these people, it's an emotional process. So like, it's very tight. Mm -hmm. You're in the car with them. You get to know their kids. You share some very intimate stories and it becomes a very personable relationship mm -hmm. on an agent. That's why um, people really look at how you're doing it versus um, what you're doing. But 80% of people forget their agent's name mm. after six months on the buy side. So mm. you can't run a referral dominated business that way. But if you're always, if now let's take your wife as an example, do you, when you go home and I know you love carrot and you do all this, but are you allowed to talk about carrot all damn time with your wife and your kids? Like if that's no. all you talk about, what's going to happen? Well, dude, I mean the, the first, yeah, the first thing is no, no, we, we don't really talk about work stuff. Um, but it, it would it would really show there there would be the disconnect there in a big way between our relationship as a person versus mm -hmm. how the business is a part of the entity for sure. Yeah, it, well, it, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't work because it's a relationship. So what we're really doing mm -hmm. with our database is we're nurturing relationships with video content, which is mm -hmm. why I said earlier you need to remind versus tell. Yeah. Everyone knows you're an agent, but as long as you're um, just telling a story or reminding people you're an agent, it's a lot more effective to building a brand. Um, because you just keep popping up and it's very non-intrusive. Yep. Yep. I think the, the content side for the investor is a little bit different. It's got to always demonstrate authority, expertise, and service mm -hmm. because there's such doubt in that industry. Yep. Um, and they focus on a very specific niche and need. We know they're targeting distress. We know they're absentee. We know that they're a divorce, probate, or death, or anything mm -hmm. like that, right? Yep. So the message is really to craft towards those people. So it's more of a solution. Mm -hmm. approach. Yep. A realtor can't, you'll run out of stuff to say, you guys, you cannot <laughs> keep talking about yep. real estate every week of the month or every month of the year. It's just, there's only so much content you can create. Dude. So, so what are the things that you're, you're guiding your agents on for the remind content? Like let's kind of go through some, some examples because I can think of a bunch of them, but I've been doing content for years and kind of my mind goes there, but that's one of the first objections or blocks that I'll hear from an agent is they're like, Oh my gosh, this sounds amazing. I, I understand it. I know why I should do it. Then, Oh man, the block comes up. I don't know what to do for content. Uh, yeah, some things always happens. Do. We got to first, just, you got to create content that makes you excited. Like if I were to get on video and do dance moves, I'm not that excited about it. Therefore I'm not going to do it. <laughs> but if I'm on video talking about video and I'm like, great, I like doing this. Right. Mm -hmm. that's my, that's what I like to do. Yep. So there's all, there's no shortage of content um, to create. So it really depends on the individual's personality, their audience, their network, their local market. Mm -hmm. But in short, HGTV stuff, um, mm -hmm. business owner interviews are great. Mm -hmm. If you're a parent and create parent friendly business interviews, showcase them. Mm -hmm. um, you'll not, you won't run out of shortage for that, but a lot of people don't like to do that. So yep. great. Go ahead and do neighborhood tours. Um, your whole town has a neighborhood tours. If you don't like to do that, do new construction sites. Mm. Regardless of what these little niches are, there's not a shortage of content in the community yep. because all an agent is, is a tour guide for their community. Mm -hmm. That's the positioning. You have to be an advocate. Mm -hmm. So if you look at it um, from that way, it's not really uh, anything more than that. Yep. Right? Yep. Every time you do a video, you're really reminding everyone what you do. Yep. Um, I love case studies for investors and agents, especially mm -hmm. investors. Um, this 55 year old homeowner was facing foreclosure. 
So we stopped the bank from taking it. And now he's living happily ever after in a three bedroom house. Yep. And he was able to access his equity before the bank stole it. Here's yep. how. So it's like, 100%. we have like, literally if you're doing 24 deals a year, you have 24 potential case studies. Mm-hmm. So it's not a shortage of video content. Um, it's, it's laziness. It's lack of, um, it's, it's, a lot of it is um, paralysis by analysis in a lot of times. Yep. So first is you have to create a video strategy you're excited about. That's what we do with everybody. If yep. I don't have a client, if they're not going to be excited about doing video. Mm. So first create the strategy and that's going to be different for everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's not shortage of content. You have a whole buyer series. You can talk about seller stuff. You can talk about businesses, communities, case studies, points of interest in your local community, charities, fundraisers, local events, yep. uh, community informational. If you want these scripts, I got 80 of them. Dude. They're mad lips. Where, 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 where can people find, like, before we, before we move on to some other stuff, where can people find that kind of stuff from me? Because I know you've got a business yeah. that does this stuff for people. Yeah, we, we do either way. We either do it for you or you could base, or we'll teach your videography how to do it, a videographer cool. how to do it. You know, or you could just take all of our scripts. And as long as you know how to do Mad Libs, it's really that simple. Everything's I love it. broken down and taught, even how to shoot them with your cell phone. So we either do it for you or you, we teach you how to do it on your own. Just a matter of what flavor you want to roll with. Sweet. I love it. Well, dude, so one, one thing I want to, I want to, I want to do to, to piggyback on what you said there, and then I want to transition to something cool that you showed me right before this uh, with some new type of video you guys are doing. <clears throat> but uh, some people might be saying, well, cool. What, what Mike said makes sense, but how do you apply that? Right? So let me, I want you guys to show me, uh, I want, I want to show you guys what I'm doing for content. So I have a software company, but what Mike said were a few things, right? I can look at the niches and do content in the niches. I can do business interviews in my town. I can do case studies and I can do things that I'm interested in that I probably know that my market will be interested in too. So let me show you guys real examples of what I'm doing. So number one, what am I doing right now? I'm interviewing another business that has a great service that my market would be interested in. That's, that's the equivalent of interviewing a local business. That's what Mike totally. is doing on here. Number two, you guys look at a lot of my content. It's case studies from our customers. Okay, a lot of that stuff is that. So that marks that box there with Mike. Number three um, is, uh, is the niche stuff. Like we have an entire series of videos on the different niches of how you can use it for land and how you can use it for this and how you can use it for that. Number four though, is the stuff I'm passionate about, Mike, uh, that I know our clients are, is you know, I'm really passionate about how, how entrepreneurship can make an impact in your communities. I'm, I'm passionate about how it can, it can give you freedom and flexibility. I'm, I'm passionate how most most businesses actually trap people, but when you market the right way, it, it sets you free. And I, I love the mindset side of things and just human performance. So guys, what is the rest of my podcast about? What is almost all my Instagram about? It's almost all about that stuff. It's about the stuff I'm pumped about talking about that I know my market will be interested in about talking about. It has nothing to do with real estate or leads. But like Mike said, I'm in front of them. I'm engaging them. That's where I'm really building connection. And oh, by the way, look at this amazing case study next week from a client that used our stuff. So I'm doing the same thing that Mike's talking about. It's the exact thing. So follow what I'm doing and go, okay, cool. Let me just do that and then apply it to your business no matter what it is. So yeah, Yeah. same here. uh, We just redid our um, content calendar. And if you feel like you're a little media publishing company, that's the way you got to look at your business. Because Mm -hmm. every time you create content, 10 to 15% of the people who see it are moving this year. And 100% Mm -hmm. of the people who see it have a referral for you guys if you're in real estate. Mm. So it's about being consistent with it the same way you're consistent in farming. But instead of farming a bunch of people you don't know, why don't you start farming the ones you do? And yep. you don't need to have a whole lot of them. You just need to have 100, 200 people. Like everyone tries to reach like 10,000 people. And the truth of it is you guys can only take on another three clients. Mm. So like, what the mm. hell are you doing? You're, 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 it's a losing battle from the beginning instead of yep. just owning the minds of the 300 people that you would invite to your wedding or funeral. Now, gotcha. if we do the math on those 300 people that you'd invite to your wedding or funeral, I would much rather spend $100 on gifts on those 300 people than go out and spend $5,000 a month on Zillow leads that I might convert. Mm. Yep. Right? So let's just yep. do the numbers on the 300. Uh, 10 to 15% of them are moving in this year. It averages around 14%. So what's the, mm-hmm. Trevor's a math guy. Was that 43, 45? Yep. 42, 30, 45? 40 something, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, last I checked, that's a pretty good year for a real estate agent. But that's not why oh, we man. market them. We market them for the referrals primarily because mm. if you market them for the direct business, you're going to have commission breath. Yep. Okay. So you mm-hmm. market them for the referral business and you just happen to attract their, their direct business. 100% of the people we know, know someone who can, they can refer you to. That's it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Every single person lives somewhere. You guys, it's emotional decision. It's highly conversable. Mm. That's why it's so referral based. And that's why attention matters.
Dude, I, I, I love it when you break it down that simply because like you said, a lot of people try to picture uh, a too, too big of a swath. And when it's this huge, huge kind of um, undefined glob, you don't know who to talk to. You don't, you don't know who I'm talking to, who are they? And so when you, when you define that, that, that group, make it the people you want to work with, make it the people you enjoy working with, make it the people that are within the niche that you can serve best and pays you well. And then you probably, per, you know, within really, really good defined limits of who they are. Like if, if you absolutely love uh, working with young families to help them find their amazing home, that's your primary niche the majority of your 300 are probably going to be young families or people that know young families, which is almost everybody. Yep. Um, or if you, if you love luxury homes or downsizing or upsizing or whatever it is, like that's probably going to be the majority of your 300 and you know who you're talking to, which I love. Yeah. Well, dude, let, let, let's transition over to the thing we were talking about right before this. So um, I know you've got some things pulled up here. There's some cool video stuff you're doing where it's like interactive video. You're being, you're able to help people show houses uh, digitally uh, yeah. Let's walk through what people can do right now this second during COVID to better show houses and better uh, put that up there sure. through the digital side, but then they can leverage this outside of COVID too, which would be okay. amazing. So once COVID happened, uh, we got a call from one of the Mike Ferry coaches and he's like, all right, I have an issue. Um, all of our guys, Mike Ferry people, all of you guys, you guys are freaking mm -hmm. sales animals, man. You guys can close, 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 close. It's like Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross phase, right? <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, but the problem was, is that they had nothing to present. And mm -hmm. like these guys are trying to do zoom meetings like this and yep. uh, they're in their underwear, their kids are running around, they're frustrated. They don't even know how to press play. Mm -hmm. So uh, we started building these virtual presentations and ended up coming in. We ended up building a, a center. So I'll sort of show you uh, here's a, here's a good example of how you can multi-purpose. Cool. So um, we ended up building like these uh, Prezi presentations. Uh, I'm sharing my screen here. And what everything I believe is positioning. And I believe the way that you appear is the conversion, especially when it's online, especially for realtors. So we like to do things a little bit differently, something mm -hmm. that nobody else is because we, you're right, we all have the same level of service. So all this is, is like an interactive presentation. Um, and when we talk about multi-purposing the videos you're going to create, it's a perfect example. If you're going to create content about the selling process, well, just embed it within your presentation. Mm -hmm. And someone could come onto a site and literally be interactive. Now, from the perception of the public, right, which is, this is, this is the sale. It's like, I look like way cooler online than, you know, century 21 agent that's been wearing a green blazer since 1964. Right. Oh yeah. Um, it's a matter of fact, I had a guy come on to a, a podcast, brand new agent, uh, came onto my show this last week, cold called me and I'm like, I love this guy. This guy's tatted up everywhere. Brand new agent, only seven months into the into the business, mm -hmm. he averages five thousand views per video in his market of Beloit, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And he, why? Because he's so authentic that the top agent is trying to get him to work for him. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay, so like everything is perception, right? And when you have this type of content, what it really does is just say something more about your brand. Mm -hmm. you this know, is so cool. We've done a couple different things, like in here, where you're just taking everything and interactive. Uh, doing it a lot of its presentation and we've seen uh people start using these as like pre-listing packages uh actual virtual presentations mm. or just when you're at their house face to face just pull it up in front of them everyone's impressed by it and that's all that matters like because it's not um what i'm telling you or what i'm going to see it's how it makes you feel mm -hmm. yep. right um and so do that's a cool way to, I, to I, do I, it I, I love it. And for everyone listening to the audio version, like if you're listening to this just on um, Apple Podcasts, go over to the YouTube channel. So go, go to go to YouTube, look up Carrot or you know whatever, just find us. And then find this episode in our Carrot Cast playlist or just go to CarrotCast.com and find it. Because what Mike's showing on the screen is a visual presentation of a listing presentation that you can deliver over the internet through Presley or something like that. So a really yeah. cool stuff, guys. Go check out the YouTube version of this if you're just listening to this in audio. We have, uh, and here's what's interesting is that regardless of what happens with COVID, um, people are saying that people's habits are going to change. Mm -hmm. You know, like this whole virtual thing, like agents have to learn how to go on Zoom and all of that. So yep. um, that was one thing, but um, the interactive is what we're seeing. Like, um, and this is what's going to happen. I remember five years ago, you just had to get on Facebook Live in front of a whiteboard and you had the attention, right? Mm. But now those whiteboard videos, how are they doing? So just like anything, everything evolves. In video right now, now we're starting to see edited videos. For the last 18 months, it's been edited videos. Yep. Now we're starting to see storyline videos, different mm. content, creativity. What's going to happen is interactive. So if you see what I'm showing you uh, right here, 
Mm -hmm. I'm just starting to test this, but you won't be able to hear the sound. You won't be able to hear the sound on this because we're on audio. But what it is, if you guys are watching this, is that it's an interactive video that you could literally build up mm. onto your site and say, hey, welcome to my website. Thanks for visiting. Mm. I'm Mike Cuevas, and I like to sell houses, but I do things a little bit differently. But to make sure that you know um, what you're here for, what would you like to learn more about? And mm. then you'll have a choose-your-own-adventure option. I'd like to learn more about buying, renting, or selling. Great. As they, as they click on those buttons, it goes into a new video. So think Dude, this, of an interactive quiz cool, type man. funnel squeeze page like. Mm. This what what software what software are you, are you using for that? Okay, so this is called uh, Interactor. I just okay. saw it. it's a brand new company that was retargeting me on Facebook, and I gave in, and it was awesome. <laughs> Um, it was only 77 bucks, dude. Like mm. this is $77 to have the software to put this thing together. Dude, this, this, this is way cool. So is it a bunch of YouTube videos that are, that it's no, kind of flowing you could, through? Uh, you could do all the above. So you could do on the back end. It's, it's a drag and drop virtual video funnel building. Hmm. That it's is very cool, simple where, um, I'm by no means a tech guy. Mm -hmm. um, I've learned in the last six years, I've learned to sort of have to know about WordPress and code and HTML because what I, for what I do, but I, I hated this stuff um, <laughs> in the past, right? All it is is embed code. Yep. So you drag and drop and you could do a lot of things with this, but what's really interesting is, uh, and I haven't gotten far to test it, but they're saying it's the conversion because it's interactive, mm. which means it's attention based. Yep. People are losing attention in the first 10 seconds, but now they're like, oh, I could press a button. Did I, can I press a button on this video? Really? Gotcha. With my hand? I could press the, wait, 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 you're telling me I can press that button. <laughs> All right. That is the differentiator. You guys mm -hmm. imagine doing a listing video like that. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the listing. Which room would you like to see first? That's so, cool. Mm. See what I mean? Like that kind of stuff people are doing. And the one who does is just, you know, at least in the eyes of the public is way more, um, dude, expertise or way skilled than the one who does it right that's, so that's content awesome. is all positioning i believe and dude so so th those that were watching the video version of it so there were two really good examples there um and you guys can go use those tools right there was interactor for that thing and then there was presley i think for the first one uh presley. mike's company yeah. presley mike's company does that stuff for you guys so he'll script it out where you guys can go do it or they'll go do it for you let's go to real estate marketing dude.com and you guys can check that out. I don't make any money sending you there. I just know they do amazing work. And the more that we can get you guys to do video content, uh, the better it is for us as well and for you guys. So uh, we, we'd love for you guys to, to get video content done, whether it takes, um, you know, you pulling away and just uh, you know, writing your own scripts and going and doing it, or whether you want to connect with Mike and his team and do it as well, like whatever's going to take moving that forward, which is great. Um, so there's a couple things we talked about on this on this podcast, which was really, really cool. I want people to to pull back and remember. So number one, uh, one of my biggest takeaways, man, and I don't know if I'd heard it before or for some reason right now, it's just kind of uh, hitting me the way that you said it. It's, it's not about um, whatever, but you talk about reminding, like you're just reminding people that right there. I, I want to take that away in a big way. I want everyone to, because it's not really about marketing to them every day. It's like, we're just reminding you here that we're here and, and we're doing it by adding value or being entertaining. It could, could be one or the other. Uh, so reminding is a big deal. Uh, the next one might give you guys really, really good information on how to come up with your content topics. Okay. There was the case study. There was the interview, the local business. There was the, what are things you're interested in and talk about those things you're passionate that your market would be too. And then there was the actual like real estate stuff, the niche stuff. Um, that's really good. And then there was some more stuff too, but then there was the technology. How do you guys adopt some of the new t technology, especially in COVID? So you can do good listing presentations if you're an agent or if you're an investor, how can you do a good presentation uh, with, with them over the phone or over a Zoom instead of having to be in their, in their house right now? The same exact model applies whether you use a slide deck or whether you use a Prezi, go do something like that. And if you need help doing it, reach out to Mike and his team. They can help you uh, uh, craft the whole thing or do it for you. Um, Mike, what do, what, do you guys, what, do, what are you guys really focusing on moving forward throughout the rest of this year? Um, with helping your clients? Is there, are you kind of, hey, we're, we're executing the same stuff as normal and just, just making sure people realize they need to do this? Or is there anything that you guys are looking for coming out of COVID that you think will change that you're prepping your strategies and, and offerings for? Um, well, the virtual presentation was a direct result of COVID. Um, yep. So we, we created a need and uh, there's a need, so we filled it. And then I think it's just, we've, if anything, we're just in different verticals. We could do anything from 
investors, mortgage, real estate agents, it doesn't matter. It's all the mm -hmm. same process regardless of what business it is. Yep. I just stick in the real estate space because I have all the scripts for it. I have, I know it, like I have everything mm -hmm. done from blogs to scripts. It's really just plug and play for us. So, uh, and I also believe in a niche. Mm -hmm. I can be your marketing dude, but then I'm breaking my own damn, what I'm teaching you guys, right? Yep. So it's like, with the, I know that I will do more as real estate marketing dude than I will as your marketing dude. Mm -hmm. So I stick yep. within a niche too. So everything we do, we actually practice. Um, but yeah, we're just going to stay on it. I think, um, if anything, content creation is finally here in the real estate mm -hmm. agent industry. Um, Brian Clark, I remember seeing him from copy blogger, um, I said at his event, I went out, pulled him to the side. So Brian Clark's one of the guys I used to study when I started content marketing. He's a guy yeah. who owns a company. It used to be called copy blogger. He sold it. Anyways, this guy's really smart co copy writing and content. He used to be a real estate agent and I went to him at his conference and I'm like, I pull him aside and I'm like, dude. What do you think if I brought this to the real estate industry? Like, what do you think mm -hmm. would happen? He's like, any, I guess I have to swear this is exact words. He says, they're too lazy. They're never going to do it. <laughs> That's exactly what he said. The, the real estate industry will never create content. This is like in 2012. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I think he might be actually right. I think what's happened now is that we are now forced to create content because content yep. creation today is modern day prospecting. Yep. The days of cold calling, door knocking, chasing Zillow leads. The reason why Zillow's changed their model, guys, because it doesn't work anymore. Mm. Um, and they're going to a referral based model because they understand that agents are selling their leads who are closing them. Mm -hmm. So yep. content is modern day prospecting. So I think if anything, um, we have to all be in the business of media. We have to all be in the business of content creation and we just want to be the ones who are going to be the most affordable way to do it without breaking a bank. Dude, I, I, I love it, man. Guys, go to realestatemarketingdude.com. Uh, go check out everything that they have there. Mike has a ton of really good content too. Go follow him on Facebook because he's always putting out uh, good interviews over there and all kinds of cool stuff. And uh, start creating content if you're not right now. Uh, I, I did a webinar right before this. That was the whole topic is trying to get people to see the shift of the industry we've been talking about for years now. And the funny thing is, now we've, we've been early on, on two or three of, of the big shifts that have happened. We talk about them way before people uh, think that they're real. Uh, and this one we've been talking about for over two years about the wholesale, the retail, da, 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 da. And then all of a sudden now we're fully in it. And, um, and the way you stand out is with content, y'all. It's like Mike said, it's the way you prospect, but also the way you stand out in a really competitive and really cluttered market. If everyone has a similar offering, you either have to compete, you either have to complete a fundamentally different unique selling proposition, which is what the iBuyers have tried to do, or you have to go out there and become an authority and stand out through your content. And so if you're not doing one of those two, um, then you're going to be looking back in 12 months and 24 months going, man, where'd my business go? Uh, the market moved around me. I didn't move with it. So guys, go to realestatemarketingdude.com, tap into what they've got, and then come back to Carrot and take all that content, put it into video posts, and put it into other things to get it ranked really, really well in Google uh, so you can crush it. Mike, dude, appreciate you coming on, man. Thanks, dude. Uh, we, like, like you were saying, we need to, we need to close the loop on, on us like working together uh, more. And uh, I, a lot of our clients can, can use what you've got. So thank you for hopping on here, dude, big time. Thank you. Appreciate it, dude. Everybody, make sure you go back to Apple iTunes, Spotify, wherever the heck you're listening to this, or YouTube. Hit the subscribe button because you get access to these episodes at least a week before we put them on our blog. Uh, and also, give a rating and review. Those things fire me up. I read every single one of them. Uh, it's what really fuels getting us in front of more and more agents and investors that we can get them to shift their mindset around building businesses that give you freedom, flexibility, grow your finances, but help you make a greater impact. And this type of marketing helps you do it. So guys, we'll see you on the next episode. Talk soon.